Welcome to this introductory session on how to use Linux. In this video, you will learn a selection of commands that will be useful for your work. This session is presented by the Research Applications team at Queen Mary University of London. We support various research computing services for researchers at Queen Mary, notably the High Performance Compute Cluster, where most of the research at Queen Mary is performed. We also manage the on-site GitHub platform, which you may use during your studies. What is Linux? Well, just like Windows and Mac OS, Linux is an operating system. Linux is software that sits underneath all of the other software on a computer, receiving requests from those programs and relaying these requests to the computer's hardware. It is very flexible. It runs on a wide range of devices, whether low or high powered, including mobile phones, cars, laptops and supercomputers. You will find that a lot of research software is written primarily for use with Linux. Linux is a free open source operating system, meaning the source code is available for anyone to view, use or modify under the same free software license. Since the code is freely available and can be used for different purposes, you will find different varieties of the Linux operating system and bundled packages called a Linux distribution. Some of the most popular examples include Ubuntu and Red Hat or CentOS. The Terminal Emulator is a graphical window launched from the Applications menu of the desktop environment of the Linux distribution you're using. It runs an interpreter called a shell that allows you to interact with the computer using a series of typed commands in a precise and flexible manner. Most Linux systems use a scripting language called bash as the default shell language. Using the shell, we can run commands, interact with files, see the command history, and a whole lot more. More information about the structure of a command and an introduction to some useful commands are featured in the next section. The shell prompt is a sign that the machine is ready for you to type a command. Prompt styles vary, but usually display your username, computer name, and the current directory that you're working in. The tilde symbol represents your home directory, which is the default starting point when starting a terminal session on your local machine or when logging in to a remote machine. An important step in gaining skills with Linux is understanding the structure of the file system. Files and folders are stored in a hierarchical tree and the base of the tree is referred to as the root directory. Then below that we have various directories used by the operating system. This diagram shows some of the most common ones. For example, the bin directory stores binaries or compiled programs such as commands to copy or move files. The var folder contains system files that might change size, such as system log files. Most of these system folders at this level wouldn't typically be directly manipulated by a user. Now let's talk about the home directory. Each user on the system has their own directory within the home directory where they are permitted to store files. As we mentioned on the previous slide, the home directory is the default starting point when you open a terminal session or the file manager window from a graphical environment. Even on a shared system, your home directory is only owned by you and by default, other users won't be able to read or modify your files. It's good to understand where your files reside within the whole system, since this can cause some confusion with newer users when copying files around. In this picture, we have a user called Bob and the standard is that the name of the home directory is the same as the username. So the home directory will also be called Bob. In Bob's folder, there are two files, beach.jpg and list.txt. Meanwhile, Carol has some files in the top level of her home folder and also a directory called docs with a PDF file in it. We also need to discuss the topic of absolute and relative paths. An absolute path describes the location of a file on the file system independent of which directory you happen to be currently working in. So, if Carol wants to refer to resume.pdf, 
which resides in her docs directory, the absolute path describes the path through the directories all the way from the top of the file system. So in this example, it would be slash home slash carol slash docs slash resume.pdf with the preceding forward slash denoting the top level and each subsequent level being denoted by another forward slash until we get to the file. Relative paths describe a location that is dependent on the directory where a user is currently working at the moment. If Carol is just logged in and is in her home directory, then the relative path to the resume.pdf file can be described as dot slash docs slash resume.pdf, where the dot folder means the current folder. In some instances, such as changing directories and copying files, it's sometimes possible to get away with just writing docs slash resume.pdf without the preceding dot slash. You will encounter the dot and dot dot folders a lot. The dot dot folder means the parent folder or the folder above you in the file system hierarchy. If you keep the diagram of the file system in mind, then it helps the understanding of these concepts a lot. As you gain familiarity with the Linux shell, there are lots of little tips you can employ to help your productivity. Here's some starters. Using the tab key will, at a simplistic level, automatically complete a command or file name you've begun typing. If there's multiple matches available, then additional options will be shown. For example, typing rmd tab key has only one matching command, so we'll complete the word rmdir for you. The tab completion is context sensitive. If Carol wants to display the contents of file1.txt using the less command, she can type less fi tab and it will complete to less file1.txt because there are no other matching files or folders. Note that as she has already typed the less command, the bash completion knows not to present a list of commands matching the fi prefix. Another useful thing to know is that recent commands are stored in a history file. The history command will display your history on screen. Alternatively, recently typed commands can be browsed using the up and down arrow keys. A note about file names. While spaces in file names are allowed, it's not a great idea for readability and usability reasons. You're better off using underscore or dashes instead of spaces. And you should also know that file names on Linux are case sensitive. So if a file name starts with a capital letter, for example, it's treated as a different file to one with all lowercase letters. It's the same for commands. The lowercase ls command is a Linux command, but typing ls in caps will return an error saying command not found. 